Chapter six of Claude Lightfoot or How the Problem Was Solved by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter six in which Claude loses his temper and puts himself decidedly in the wrong. The first, second, and third weeks of his new life passed quite happily for little Claude. In the yard he flitted about gay as a sunbeam, and in the classroom, while giving full satisfaction in his recitations he contrived ably assisted by mr grace to suppress himself if i may use the expression to the required standard of discipline with now and then a startling failure it was hard for him to refrain from pinching any fat boy who came within his reach it was impossible for him to sit quiet when any one answered wrong and in his zeal to have the question answered rapidly he would jump to his feet dance halfway up the room while exclaiming in a blaze of excitement ask me mr grace he generally resumed his seat in a wilted condition despite his heroic efforts to keep within bounds he sorely dissatisfied his professor who however having discovered early that claude and himself could not understand each other had refrained from speaking out his mind so claude flattered himself that he was doing excellently such too was the opinion of father maynard who had charge of the first communion class he was deeply impressed with the fair flushed bright-eyed face so full of interest so clearly expressing the desire of its owner to know and have at command everything that bore upon the catechism for owing in great part to kate's sweet influence claude had thrown his whole soul into the work of preparation and during the hour devoted to christian doctrine he was a model in conduct on the one hand and on the other could repeat word for word not only the answers but even the questions as they stood in the book many and many a time did kate and claude discuss the coming of the great day it was the topic of their sweetest moments the last week of preparation had come and as claude on monday morning tripped lightly to school he little knew the troubles and annoyances that were to try his very soul besides the prospect of the coming day claude had other cheering anticipations to begin with under the skilful and eager training of frank elmwood he had easily succeeded in getting the in and out curve steady practice at noontime for half an hour each day had given him so remarkable a command of the ball that he could put it over the base and high or low almost at will the captain of the high flyers was delighted with his progress and gave it out as his opinion that claude who had never yet pitched in a match game was certainly the best small boy pitcher so far as he knew in the city of milwaukee and to show that he was willing to stand by this opinion he had challenged the rockaway club of the east side to a game on the coming wednesday with claude in the box you may be sure that claude looked forward to that afternoon with eagerness he was by no means a timid boy and was willing to stand up before the stoutest set of youngsters that ever shouldered the willow in the next place claude was on this very day to buy for himself the finest boy's baseball bat that he had ever laid eyes on it was a wagon tongue symmetrically fashioned which had been resting for some time in a bundle of bats on sale at a certain notion store near the college claude had in passing noticed it paused and with permission of the shopkeeper taken it out of the bundle and examined it now in the line of athletics claude possessed excellent judgment and as he swung the bat at an imaginary ball he was convinced that this particular bat was made for him. "'How much is it, mister?' Seventy-five cents.' "'Ooh,' said Claude, taking a nickel out of his pocket and looking at it ruefully. "'Won't you trust me, mister? I'll give you five cents down and pay you the rest when I grow up.' Claude seldom left the house without ten or twenty cents in his pocket, and he never returned with anything.' 
his mother while grudging him nothing did not consider it prudent for her child to carry a large sum cash sales here johnny said the proprietor shortly well mister won't you keep it for me i'll keep it till i get a buyer answered the amiable merchant claude told his sister of the occurrence that very afternoon and on this monday morning kate who had been saving up for a week handed her pet the required seventy-five cents then kate who had been on the point of starting off for school was obliged to go back and readjust her toilet and claude's demonstrations of gratitude were within a little of bringing her late for class so claude on this particular monday morning was blithe as a bird in the first joyousness of spring he carried his blithesomeness into class and before noontime received notice to copy twenty-five lines of his history and not to play after lunch-time till the lines were finished poor claude his bat the only the newly bought was awaiting him and boys were to play rounds immediately after lunch and he had counted upon testing it in that one game he had thought to hurry through his lunch to be the first in the yard and as soon as any small boy should appear to shout rounds innings the other small boy would shout in return another and as being first to bat claude would have an excellent chance of proving all the good qualities of his new acquisition but now what was he to do oh yes he could forego his lunch and write the lines during that time and this claude did he worked with unwonted celerity finishing his lines in a few minutes and dashed into the yard hurrah not a boy had appeared he looked about for mr grace that he might give in his lines but mr grace was not to be seen rounds innings he shouted as dan dockery emerged from the lunch-room another screamed dan catch called pearson keep my place for me dan while i go into the reading-room and get my bat panted claude all right answered dan claude returned presently breathless with excitement and aglow with pleasurable anticipation by this time several boys were coming out and pitch first base second base third base shortstop and left field were quickly claimed the time had at length come and in an ecstasy of motion claude bat in hand dashed down the yard to take his position as batsman at the home plate claude came a clear distinct baritone voice claude claude shouted a number of boys mr grace wants you all right wait for me fellows i've just got to hand him some lines and claude anxious not to lose his place in the game came running toward mr grace who was standing outside the storm door and as he ran fumbled in his breeches pocket for the copy he had made he found it as he gained mr grace's side and forgetting in the excitement of the moment to remove his cap handed the paper to his teacher there it is mr grace every word i wanted to give it to you as soon as i finished it but you weren't in the yard then claude turned and took three rapid springs claude come back poor claude winced and obeyed he glanced wistfully at the bat in his hand a glance that would have moved the heart of any one who knew what a real american boy feels on the subject of baseball the fellows are going to begin to play said claude and it's my turn at the bat business before pleasure claude ah me some of these axioms can be so cruel when did you write this continued mr grace very slowly very deliberately who never having played ball in his life and having nothing of the dramatic faculty as i have already stated was not at all moved by claude's signs of haste during lunch said claude noticing with a sinking at the heart that dan dockery was at the bat that was not the right time claude i didn't want to deprive you of your lunch little boys should eat regularly may i go sir entreated claude almost sobbing as he perceived that the players were discussing the question of putting another batsman in his place no go down to the lunch-room and eat your lunch 
the clear serene slow accents in which mr grace spoke were maddening in their utter lack of sympathy i won't burst forth claude on the spur of the moment his eyes flashing with anger and then he could have bitten his tongue off oh the pity of it here within a few days of his first communion he had been impudent and defiant to a religious oh the pity of it gentle reader that with so much goodness and purity of intention we poor mortals go on maddening and worrying one another and crossing each other's lives in lines that lead to such ugly collisions mr grace had unwittingly indeed been really cruel to the child he had tortured the lad into impudence and yet mr grace to this day i dare assert does not know that he had acted cruelly he intended to be kind he pitied the little fellow going about without his lunch and in his kindness of suggestion had met with a flat i won't claude would have apologized in the same breath but overcome by horror shame and vexation his voice broke so that he could not trust it and it was all he could do to keep back the tears claude i am astonished at you go over there by the turning pole and stay there till the first bell rings and deeply hurt mr grace walked away poor claude it was an affair of a baseball bat but it was one of the great sorrows of his childhood he obeyed this time but apologize no never he had said i won't and now he wasn't sorry mr grace was mean yes mean now mr grace was not mean he was good and kind according to his lights but they were half lights yet we can pardon claude for his misjudgment presently mr grace bethought him of the fact that claude still needed his lunch and in all kindness of heart he walked over towards the culprit to release him and send him to the lunch-room but he approached claude just as the waves of passion were surging highest in his bosom and claude with a glare of dislike and defiance fixed full upon mr grace's face deliberately turned his back on the prefect what a rude boy he commented interiorly i see it will not be prudent for me to go near him now for if i do he'll surely give me more impudence frank elmwood came by what's the matter claude but claude his bosom still heaving rubbed his hand over his eyes and made no answer the evening hours of class passed gloomily for our poor little friend and kate was driven to do all the talking on the way home after claude had gone to bed kate entered to give him the good-night kiss he was awake sit down kit by my side i've an awful story to tell you and claude told her all kate said very little but in those tender feminine ways which good and tactful women employ so well she soothed the wounded heart and banished from claude every touch of unkind feeling now my dear you'll apologize to mr grace in the morning yes kit i've been bad but it was hard so it was dear but we'll begin all over shall we not yes kit yes claude had been bad his rudeness to mr grace was very wrong but who of us would hesitate to accept his chance for heaven had he died that night the poor boy fell asleep with an act of contrition on his lips and great resolves in his heart End of chapter six